Okay. I'm assuming that's Randy Strong that's on. Or Laura, or both? Maybe. I'm going to set my clock here, so I'm going to start it. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome, everyone. For those in person, and I think that's Laura and Randy Strong. And um, I guess they don't have a picture. Glad to have you participating in this Lenten workshop and hope that you're able to attend all of them. But if not, we are recording. It's a, it's a valuable asset to our personal Lenten experience as well as beneficial to our church as a whole. You're gonna have to speak up. The sessions are being recorded. Can we close the door, please? Oh, that, that, that must be the right. Oh, okay. Oh, oh, here we go. Here comes Barb and Randy. Okay, sorry. So that's Laura that's joined that's us. Laura okay. there. Good, good morning. Good morning. Um, it, it, uh, the sessions are also being recorded. I thought one of the things I'd share from last week is to a great extent, these sessions are driven by discoveries made through the efforts of our team for a team. The first stage is what was churches filled by incoming. The second stage is what is what are churches what is church what is churches doing now they're emptying generations now in church, and then number three is what can we be, and number four is we're at a, a crossover. There's two paths we can choose: we can exist as we are for as long as we can, or we can be willing to change and then bring about changes. One way to bring about changes is through hospitality. I have a short opening prayer. Holy Spirit, lead us into the wilderness of this Lenten season. Tell us, open us, free us. Guide us out of the wilderness into the bright future which God has planned for each of us and this church. Amen. I thought I'd highlight real quick the 10 things we talked about at session one. We talked about worship wars, prolonged minutia meetings, facility focus, program driven, inward focused budget, inordinate demands from pastoral care, attitudes of entitlement, greater concerns about change than about the gospel, anger and hostility, and evangelical apathy. I'm using a sports analogy. It doesn't matter what we did last year, it's a new season. We need to be ready for to make some changes if we go down the path of, of wanting to revitalize. Um, in chapter two, it kind of opens up in, in talking about what kinds of experiences that we had in, in business, a restaurant or a hotel, as we first walk in, uh, in terms of first impressions. Hopefully they were all good first impressions, but I suspect if we had time, we could each share a story or two about a, a bad first impression. And usually they're made within a few minutes. The church creates the same effect. The hospitality we demonstrate matters. Hospitality can be a bridge that draws people in and encourages them to take the next step of faith. I, um, Laura's saying that I, she can't hear her. She can't hear? I don't know where the microphone is. It's supposed to be in there. Is it up on top there? Is it on oh, that's top camera. Yeah, that's I can't. Yeah, there's no X on the microphone that I can see on, on the computer or anything. It has not been a good day for technical. No, it's not. <laughs> you know, somebody needs to tell me he can't go off to you. You tell him, Sue. Yeah, I'll yeah. tell him. Yeah, yeah. 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 Just wait and see how much difference that's going to make. <laughs> yeah. Everything's still uh, as far as I can because tell. We're we're off. Yeah, I should be recording. You know, I'm yeah. not sure where the mic is if it's just that you're not. Well, we're recording, but can, she can't use. Because you're behind the mic, the mic is actually yeah. the, oh, that the, 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 the mic is actually up on top. Yeah, of the mic. so, so if it's right there, you, so, you're yeah. not getting picked up from the mic. 
You have to put your so back I to the screen. The yeah. <laughs> it's the camera and the mic. Yeah. And both of both. Yeah. Right. right. Which the camera's the mic on top of that. Right. Does that make sense? Thank you, Randy. Thank you, Randy. Also, you have to speak loudly, Larry. Yeah, we forgot that, you know. We've got one of those. We forgot Boxes that, that blue just talk. I should have just gone home and got You're going to see the back of my head. So, Edward. can you hear me now, Laura? <laughs> she might be muted. Okay. She might be muted. Um, the church creates the same effect hospitality demonstrates matters hospitality can be a bridge that draws people in to encourage them to take the next step of faith or it can be a barrier uh, for the individual who quickly decides to disengage well, let's just name it. Most every business knows the important hospitality is developing customer loyalty and engagement. Loyalty grows as customers feel cared for and valued. While we know hospitality is important, our practices are inconsistent at best and in some cases non-existent. The word hospitality means the generous and friendly treatment of visitors and guests. As a church, we are called to love the neighbors and guests and the strangers. In Hebrews 13.2, it reads, don't neglect to open your homes to a guest because by doing this, you have been the host to angels and may not even know it. Jesus offered hospitality during his earthly ministry. He exercised hospitality to all while fulfilling his mission. He was never too busy, too judgmental, too weary, or too discouraged to extend hospitality. To everyone he encountered, he demonstrated radical hospitality. We can remember the story of when the, the wedding at Cana, when he fed 5,000, when engaging in life-changing conversation with an adulterer, to name a few. He was consistently creating environments and maximizing encounters to welcome people, heal people, engage people in conversation, moving his mission forward. Jesus' life and ministry were characterized by hospitality. As a church, we are a living body instituted by Jesus with the power of the Holy Spirit to invite others to know, love, and serve him. That is why hospitality matters. We are the hands and feet of Christ. First impressions matter. They are lasting. It only takes 30 seconds to make a first impression. 30 seconds to either draw people in or push them away. The first impression is when a person makes a quick mental decision about whether to explore or to more or to disengage. The ultimate goal is to give someone <clears throat> the impression that not only is it okay for the other person to get close to you, that it would be well worth their time. The importance of making a good first impression could not be higher. Hospitality done well creates a first good impression. When we extend radical hospitality, others discover that engaging and getting closer is absolutely worth their time. It's life transforming. Most churches are friendly. Your community does not need another friendly church. There are pr plenty of friendly churches. Those in your community need and deserve something more from us. They need a church that values, practices, and extends radical hospitality. To reach and disciple new people, we have to go above and beyond friendliness, directing all our energy and attention toward the goal of good, a first impression where a visitor or a guest wants to get closer. Skip a page. If we're looking for a small way to get closer, here are two simple ideas. The three minute rule. Encourage each person to spend th just three minutes before and after worship service or event greeting those that we do not know. People naturally gravitate to visit with those they know. The result is that when visitors come, they're experienced too often is that no one speaks to them. What do you think of that rule? Does that appeal to you? Does that make sense to you? 
I, I, I like simple rules because it's something we can remember. Then there's the 10 foot rule. Encourage each person in your congregation to be attentive to the people and environment within 10 feet of them. Guests do not want to be overwhelmed with welcome. This rule ensures that in the closest proximity, take responsibility for introducing themselves and engaging the guests with great hospitality. Examples of being attentive to the environment may be picking up trash, straightening up a chair, wiping down a countertop in the bathroom, or other specs other aspects of the environment that contribute to a good welcoming first impression. And I guess I'll pat myself on the back. I remember when we had the ice skating in the parking lot, I just said, I gotta do something about this. We've got people coming to church. And so that's that's the kind of thing that, that we're looking for is just, you know, noticing the little things. And, 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 and as, as we leave the church, what did the signs say out there? Um, I forget what they say now. I just did a brief entrance. entrance. Yeah, servant entrance. Thank you. A servant's entrance. Oh, oh, thank you. Thanks. These are simple rules that every church and individual which a church can follow. It only takes commitment to do so consistently to make a big difference. I'm sure there are other little issues that we could all share, like the one I just shared. That was the one that just popped into my mind. But there's 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 little things that speak volumes in, in terms of you know and we, Zach works really hard um, when we're not here from Sunday to Sunday to make sure things are in good order too as well. He tries to make sure the restrooms are, are clean, empty the garbage cans so when people come in they don't see garbage cans that are full, those kinds of things too. Any comments about the three minute rule or the 10 foot rule that simply we think we might be able to give it give a whirl. Please. Encourage each person in your congregation to be attentive to the people in the environment within 10, 10 feet of okay. them. Okay. And it's people and environment, I'm going to underline that, because it's, it's not just the people, it's the little things that we might see. And um, so that they're not supposed to be overwhelmed. Yes. And not, everybody. Yes. Okay. Yeah, think, yeah, that's the thing. Guests do not want to be overwhelmed. So I'm going to underline <laughs> it 10 feet. Yeah. Yeah. For example, I know um, after church, we try to, as, as we're leaving, straighten up the area where the, uh, up in that corner where the, tea, the monitor is, if, for somebody who may want to watch that, makes kind of straighten that up. And I know it's stewardship this past week. Um, Mark was going to ask uh, Zach to keep an eye on the, on the um, nursery um, so that it would be available every Sunday. And so we're try to be being pro proactive in that way too with, with, with Zach. Maybe. Yes. When you talk about the nursery, um, <clears throat> I've enjoyed watching our little people play in the narthex. And that's something that's new for us. Um, so for me as a, as a congregant to watch our kids is a pleasure. But it seems to me that we're all more of one group, and we haven't been using our nursery as much. Um, so maybe we'll have more discussions on that. But I, for one, have been very happy to have our kids in the garden. I am too. I think it works well before church. Um, you know, uh, but we've been concerned, and I know, thank goodness. <laughs> Asher is getting to the point where he's not gravitating, hopefully, so much to the stairs. You know, we, we were, as a um, CE group, worried about, you know, the little ones, if we have little ones coming in and we keep them in that corner, that's fine if the parents can grab them quick enough before they go up or down the stairs. And we, we were afraid of accidents that way. So we're opening up the nursery now that the pandemic is slowing down so that especially like Cindy has a choice if she feels that he wants to be more active, he can go in, you know, they can go into that room. And we're hoping, you know, that it will help bring in uh, more people. I think Thank you, Barb. Thank you. CEC is also 
putting together a job description right. to post in the e-blast e to see if we can, you know, if we, in the budget we approved last year, we approved, um, was it $10 an hour if I remember right, Dave? Twelve. $12 an hour, okay. And, and basically, uh, to have two people staff the um, the nursery, so that, that that's 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 something that, that is in the works. So that's that, that's why stewardship asks Zach to be you know paying attention to that on a weekly basis. So yes, that's 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 excellent. Yeah. Excellent. We need to inventory the many inwardly focused barriers that exist. Examples are. Are we available to notice visitors when they first enter the building or too busy in conversation with friends? Are we using insider language in our worship? And I know the UCC is always good for that. OCWM, Narthex, um, Chancel. Uh, I know when I first, I'm next Catholic, so when I first came to remember, I don't remember any of those terms. And so that's that's something that that um, that, that is, is important. Are parking spaces closest to the door building left empty for visitors? That's, that's something that currently isn't happening. We've, we've marked spaces for handicapped people. So in the front, we have some spaces. And I believe in the back, we have what? One or two spaces, two, two spaces. But there, you know, the book suggests, you know, make, 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 making sure we have empty spaces for visitors. That's the first sign of seeing welcome is the fact that there's maybe three or four signs that say for visitor parking, and we, we leave those open. Um, are greeters available for five to 10 minutes after worship to start welcome, start starts to welcome latecomers? Um, and will we welcome giving up our favorite seat or aisle to, to for a seat for a visitor? Um, there, these are all acts of hospitality that go um, above and beyond. And um, I know we tend to sit in the same places we always sit. And especially, and, and we have to remember this book was written pre-COVID. And it would be nice if they could have put out a little addendum to it to, to see how they change their hospitality during COVID. And maybe like us start, first starting out, there was nobody in church. And, and so uh, that would be an interesting thing to follow up on. But, we're, we're starting to get out of COVID, so I, I think that's you know that's that, this this stuff may be more applicable. Maybe we're going to have to write our own addendum to that. Amen. That's yes, I like that. I like that. Yes, that? you're elected, so no. <laughs> we'll write our own addendum. Yes, yes. Oh, yes. That's well, going to write it. She's, with, she's with, with, it with the power of the Holy Spirit um, and some creativity, we we need to we need to think of how how we can be more hospitable. In a way that uh, welcomes the, the new person who, who's maybe a little bit of afraid and, and a little, had, had some bad, prior bad experiences. Um, First Peter reads, open your homes to each other without complaining. Yes, without complaining, every ministry in the church must evaluate its current effectiveness and extending hospitality. And that's kind of some of the things we've talked about just with CPC and the nursery. Taking steps to make necessary changes that focus on the visitor, the stranger, every program, outreach event, communication, bulletin, signage, facility appearance, website, and handshake and extensions of hospitality representing Jesus, are, ex are extensions of representing Jesus when we welcome the stranger, we welcome Christ. Christ is in each of us. And, and, and we want to make the Jesus in each of us, whether we're current members or visitors come in, reach out to them. When a church to decide to invest in hospitality, united by God's love, enabling the congregation to reach more people with the message that they truly matter, the church becomes a force for good. Hospitality requires us to love strangers we are the hands and feet of Christ, participants in what Christ continues to do in us and through us in our community. That's the end of chapter two. Any comments, questions before I move into chapter three? Okay, I'll keep on going. Let's see. But I did 
this is oh, okay. I don't know if this I don't know if it's a question, but just a thought. Um, you know, how do we get this if this is a in a form of training, how do we get it out to the to the masses or you know to to our whole congregation or do we need to? You know, are we a nucleus um, that that can make a difference? Um, or model or be examples, but you know I, I like like you said I like specifics. I like okay tell me exactly what I can do. I like that that those two rules. Yeah, yeah, the, that the ten you know, foot rule and the three foot rule. That's well, something you know I can. I would say at least like, Mike. Yeah, there are videos on hospitality. You should buy you should sure. go to church. Yeah, they're very nice short ones, like they're sixteen. I was Elaine, I'm sorry. I was impressed when the Barkers came back and and granted we knew them, but it's been a long time. And people so many people were talking to them that I even had trouble finding time to get a talk to them. But they even came to our meeting last week. Sure. Yeah. But yeah. I, that that I thought about it at the time. I thought I'm really happy that people are are really sure. Uh, sure. showing that they yeah. care that they're yeah. back. Yes, definitely. So definitely. do we now the Barkers? We know and we know where to find them. So do we follow up to say we we miss you or? Uh, well, you know, they were that, here last week because they were here last. Yeah, last they week. came here this week. They, they weren't in church either, so they may have had something going on over today. Sure. For a lot of us, or, you know, as Pastor Brenda was saying, you know, getting information so that we can follow up, you know, if we have a visitor, just uh, have some way of following up, just, sure. you know, glad, sure. glad you visited us or, you know, some yeah. Art, yeah. or is that oppressive? I thought we used to do that. Well, we used to pass the hands around. Know, and so on, you know, down the pews, which yeah. isn't being done now because of COVID. Exactly. You know? And maybe with the lighter restrictions, it's something we could reinstitute. Yeah. Yeah. Council will be addressing that on Tuesday. Yeah. Well, okay. did <laughs> Janet had her hand up? Well, I just said. wanted to say, I think right now we're kind of in a, a, a spot where it's not real easy yes. to get people's names and addresses and all of that kind of a thing because of the COVID. Kind of stuff that's in, in terms I'd of, like to think that anytime I see people that I don't know, that I mean, that I kind of go up and talk to them. Sure. Sure. Yeah. I'll let Byron go then. Ready? Okay. okay. <laughs> well, eons ago, I was a church secretary. And oh, your mask down. So oh, okay. Okay. Like I said, <clears throat> eons ago, I was a church secretary for a couple of years. And not here, but at another church. And it was my responsibility on Monday morning to write a letter, uh, just saying welcome, thank you for coming, and you know, to the um, any visitors we had. And uh, you know, it was just a short little uh, letter welcoming and opening the bed. So, and I know you had said something about if you had email addresses, you would, you know, email something to them. So those are things, you know, you can think about whether the church secretary does something or you do something, you know, email-wise. Well, and, and as, as we go through this, I, not all the ministries are represented, but some of the ministries are represented here. Maybe they can take some of the things that we share here back into their ministries and, and you know, find a way to adapt, be creative, our own addendum, in terms of how, how can we do it until we can pass the um, attendance sheets like we used to do. Randy, you had your yeah, hand. I, I was just wondering if if one of the, the our, our hosts or our, one of our readers could actually have a, a card that would that, that they could uh, hand to uh, a, a guest that they, if they want to, they could fill out with their, their name and maybe an email address or something like that. 
then we would have their information that way. If, you know, one of, like I said, one of the hosts and, and it would actually have some cards with them. There's, there's many, yes, yes. That's my turn. Yeah, I'm just, I don't that's just, anybody just no, just a suggestion. Yeah. Just, I'm just to add, I think that's a great idea that Randy, I think the more personal we can be, the, the better, you know, actually going to a, a, a person rather than just, you know, saying there's a sheep in the pew or, or mm -hmm. fill something out. I don't know, and some maybe someone else can remember um, that there was a time, I think, when we took like even a loaf of bread or mm -hmm. when we had a, a visitor, we actually followed up with, and Jill's not here, she, she, she will join us. They just had other plans this morning. Because I think she tells the story of, of when she first came uh, and and was was just church shopping that that actually a loaf of bread was taken to her. Now maybe that's difficult with how you know spread out our and community with, is. With COVID, but, that may not be a good idea. Right. Well, time. but we could have maybe something turn it uh, into a yes, like a little bag of something to hand a visitor. And I mean, I love goodies. I, I don't care if it's a pen. <laughs> I, I love stuff and. You know, to have a little bag with, you know, our, our a pen with our church name on it and a little tablet or, you know, just sure. a little yeah. devotional or something. Or even hand, uh, hand wipers stuff. Yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, I love, love yeah. that. Pastor Brenda, did you want to say something? Yes. They have, so hey. the, the um, pads that we don't pass out right now because of COVID, that we hope to pass out again someday. Here is... The challenge, if members only put their name and check that they're a member, that's all your visitors are going to do too. They're going to put their name and check that they're visiting. If you want the visitor to fill out all the information, we have to fill out all the information. I know that seems like a pain, but they do what the person before them did. It's automatic. Yeah. yeah, they see what's on their suit. Yeah. So everybody has to fill everything out on the pad in order to get to hopefully get the visitors to do that as well. Yeah. yeah. To add to your uh, list of things, cups that are from a church are a thing. I have two cups from St. Paul. Oh, and yeah. 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 Any, I like anything. <laughs> I mean, I'm, 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 I'm going to call a timeout. I appreciate the creativity, <laughs> but you're eating into my time. <laughs> but, but, but please don't let this creativity go unanswered. Go back to your ministries. We have mission here. We have spiritual life here. We have stewardship here. And we have CDC. So everybody. And now we're going to say yes. Yeah. <laughs> and, and so, so you know, catch this this spirit of creativity. Catch the spirit of thinking outside the box. No side conversations, please. <laughs> Two demerits. <laughs> you get you get to do closing prayer. I'm, just <laughs> I'm going off the deep end. You better rate me on here. Okay, we'll we'll start chapter three. I'm, I'm going to see how much time I'm, I'm just trying to get a feel for how I'm doing here. <coughs> okay, about the halfway point. Good. If, if, if I finish chapter three, I'm done, whether I use my help. <laughs> I, I have chapter four, but I didn't turn it up. <laughs> um, okay, I'm going to start chapter three The Art of Hospitality, The Principles of Hospitality. The author of this chapter, Yvonne Gentile, opens with her first day on a new job. And she goes on to say she, she it was a, a new job where she had to move. It was a new job where they never had people from the corporate office come in from the outside. They always came in from the ranks. So she, she basically gets hired. She starts at the office and she felt left out with her teammates because they had a shared history and a common language, kind of like we have our sanctuary in Narthex and Chancel. And we know each other really well. The team was inwardly focused, but they also knowingly or not resented her intrusion into their comfortable circle. 
The experience taught her of the importance of the first impression. The mission became to welcome each new hire, the person hired, not getting hired, who came after <coughs> her. Lunch on the first day, anticipate and answer questions, translating insider language, OCWMN means our church's wider mission, and help adjust the new hire to the company culture. This was her first real connection with the power of intentional hospitality. And try to imagine how that feels to a new hire when you first when you first you know first day on the job where you don't know anybody and everybody else knows everybody. And and um, especially when you're right out of college, for example, some of us over our lives um, have changed careers or maybe changed employers. Some of us have worked for the same employer and we get so comfortable in our setting that when a new hire does come in, we don't go out of our way to make them feel a part of and help them get, get to know the culture. And so that's that, that's that experience of the first in culture. Um, let's see, let's see where I left off here. The author, John Pavlitz, author of the author of the book, Bigger Table wrote, this is one definition, if you will, Hospitality ascribes value to people. It declares them worth welcoming. It disarms them by easing their fears and past rejection as yielded and lets them know this place is different. Once people realize they are received with joy, they begin to rest in it and breathe again. As church leaders, regardless of the role we serve in, we are all responsible for hospitality. Whether you are clergy, staff, or volunteer, you play a role in making people feel welcome. Every conversation you have, every action you take, either brings people closer to God or pushes them farther away. It only takes guests 30 seconds to form a first impression, and they'll decide within seven to 10 minutes whether or not they're going to be come back to church for a second time. That's long before the worship has begun. The preacher has had a chance to deliver a message. First time guests will talk about their first experience of your church to up to eight to 15 times much more, and much more often if it's a bad experience. This can have a positive or negative impact on your church's reputation within the community. Um, I know in my own personal experience, I don't, I maybe not go as high as 8 to 15 for a positive experience, but if it's a real positive experience, I don't go out of my way to let people know. But if it's a bad experience, I want to tell everybody. And, 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 and that's, that's, that's what can really hurt us. You know, that's what really can hurt us. At the Church of the Resurrection, where these two authors both are on staff, they define hospitality, this is a second definition, that goes beyond being friendly. It is welcoming guests with the warmth, openness, and authenticity that significantly exceeds their expectations. And to me, authenticity means you live it. it it's, it's part of your DNA, it's part of who you are, as opposed to um, sometimes, with, especially with kids, we say, now remember to tell grandma thank you. And I'll always say, please, please thank you. Um, that's not authentic. That's not, I'm sorry. Mom made me say so. <laughs> I'm trying to ask some drama here. Um, <clears throat> it's a risk you take when you have me as a presenter. <laughs> What can I say? Um, okay, where am I at now? What's my space? Sorry. <laughs> that, that's okay. This is fun. Um, it's, that it's, okay, it's, it, it is intentional hospitality that surprises and delights people by making them feel noticed, giving them personal attention, and providing excellent follow through. It is, it is hospitality that makes guests feel so welcome they want to return again and again. Maya Angelou is often attributed with the saying, listen carefully, people will forget what you said, people will forget what you did, but people will never forget how you made them feel. I'm gonna repeat that one. Kind of like my, my 
people will forget what you said, people forget what you did, but people will never forget how you made them feel. When we have a, a warm moment of hospitality that really kind of touches us, our hearts, so to speak, we'll, we'll never forget that. It's, it's, I, mine are really bad with remembering first names. If I don't write it down within 10 seconds or say it three or four times, I am really bad at that. But I know when somebody who I've met maybe at a prior place or a prior setting says, hey, Larry, how you doing? Boy, it sure makes me feel good. Yeah. And if, if sometimes as we engage a visitor, maybe we can say something about ourselves that will allow them to feel comfortable in saying something about us. And if you can remember that, maybe they talk about a, a moment on the job didn't go well and maybe went really well. And the next time we can see, or they may say, I've got this project I'm in the middle of. And the next time you see them, you can say, well, how did that project go? I was, I was praying for you. I, I wanted you to succeed at that project. So you, you try to pick up on these little cues. And if you don't have a memory, you try to write it down as quickly as you can, or find a way to try and remember. But those are the kinds of little things that, that make people feel really, really good about your greeting them. Um, guests don't come back to the churches. Guests don't come back to our churches because of what we do. It's because how we make them feel. The three principles of radical hospitality to shape how we prepare for and interact with guests are notice, offer personal attention, and provide excellent follow-through. I want to start with notice. The author shares the story of Luke 12, I'm sorry, Luke 8, of a woman who was bleeding for 12 years while Jesus was walking through a large crowd. She touched the hem of his garment and was immediately healed. Most of us aren't as aware as Jesus was. We have a running monologue or dialogue in our minds, guilty as charged. My mind is all over the place sometimes. In fact, in prayer partners, we talk about how hard it is sometimes to keep your minds focused. To be fully present, we have to press and press the pause button on what we are thinking or doing and press the play button on what the person in front of us is saying or doing. I call that get your head in the game or be in a moment. The enemy of noticing is rushing. And Larry's really good at rushing. He's trying to juggle a bunch of balls. And whether you're no yeah, the enemy of noticing is rushing or you're trying to juggle a bunch of balls, that's when you drop them off. The way we often describe the principle of noticing is this. We want to give our guests the gift of an unhurried moment. That means we have good eye contact. That, that means we hear and listen to what they're saying. We try to pick up on little um, innuendos. Not, that's not the word I want, but Read between the lines. That's maybe that's a better way of saying it. What we may find is there's a need that maybe a pastor can help with, or maybe there's a need we can help with. Um, at camp worship and wonder, we have a lot of what I call peer counseling, and it, they have a, a little pro, they have a program where they connect an older child with the younger child through the whole week of worship and wonder, and they they build up a relationship. And, and it's really helped with homesickness. I remember the first year um, I was involved in worship wonder, there was this guy named Capper, and he was really homesick. So all of us are trying to help him connect. And it, we thought we were going to lose him, but we somehow we finally must have said something or did something that he connected with, made him feel connected. Well, I. As I take pictures around here, I was the photographer. I even taught like a little workshop on photography at Worship Wonder. So he's telling me at the dance, because there's a dance before camp is over. Larry, I want you to take a picture of me when I'm with Linda dancing with Linda. I want to take a picture. So after Worship Wonder Wonder over, out of nowhere, I get something in the mail that says, could you please send me the pictures from the dance last Worship and Wonder? And so I took the time and I, you know, I had about 12 pictures that I printed up for him. I got it to him before Christmas. He was so excited. He comes back you know, the next year and he's all gung ho. I'll tell you one more story about worship and wonder. Um, um, the Sandstrom, they're the first ones I can't remember. Ted and Maria, Maria Sandstrom. They agreed to pay for their 
two granddaughters to go to worship in London. And they all the way down there, they're saying, please, all they're going to do is pray and worship. It's going to be boring. I'm going to hate it. Don't, please, please, please don't drop this off. Fast forward a week later. You got to sign this up for next year. <laughs> <laughs> um, we had a confirmation class. It's a, it used to be a one week weekend program. You don't come back the second year. They liked it so much because they connected. They said, we got to come back the next year. That's when Matthew was with us. So we, we signed him up again. We said, they're not, you know, if somebody wants to go, let's do it. I'm sorry I digress, but I like to share those kinds of stories because, you know, once again, it's how you relate to the, the young people or visitors as they come in. Larry. So, Larry. Yes. That's, that's uh, the <laughs> one thing that would be very helpful in making sure that hospitality is intentional is not doing business before church. Um, don't ask me every question that you have on Sunday. Text me, call me, email me so that I can focus. And if we try to not do that to each other, and I know you love each other and are so glad to see each other, try to talk to each other and see each other during the week not just on Sundays. So that Sunday morning before church can be that time where we purposefully focus on visitors. Just to pick up on that, Pat and I participated in a program a number of years ago, similar to the School for Ministry. It was for lay ministers. It was called LAMP. And I can't remember the, uh, the uh, pastor's name that we had, but he was a, a, a somewhat renowned person in the Chicago CMA, Chicago Metropolitan Association, and went on to serve a national, Ruben Shears, you probably know him. And he basically said, when people come through the line, if they ask him a question, he says, call me at the office, email me. I am not here today to conduct business because if everybody who comes through the line wants to conduct business, I, I, I get overwhelmed. I just, there's no way, I, and I'm not going to stop and start taking notes because then you guys will be mad because it took an hour to get out of church. And so picking up on what Pastor Brenda said, um, that he said, I learned it, I learned that early in my ministry to do that. Um, okay, I got to figure out where I'm at here. Okay. Um, okay, so I did that one. Okay. There, there are three actions in noticing. So the first one is offer a warm greeting to each guest you encounter, starting with the person right in front of you. Remember the template below. Everyone loves to feel welcome, including longtime members. Start with making eye contact and smiling warmly. Share the story of being in a long line and what, oh, that, that's a note to Larry. I'm, so, I'm supposed to share a story. <laughs> <Oops>. <laughs> Um, the author writes, you know, you're in a long line and the cashier is, doesn't seem to be going fast enough. So everybody that's going through the line is complaining. And so she says, when you get up to the cashier, say, hi, looks like you guys have been slammed or whatever you want to say. Thanks for your patience. When us customers get testy, without exception, at that point, they look up make eye contact and smile back and their entire face lights up. And I'm guilty of not doing it. I am guilty. I'm, I'm guilty probably not saying anything because I, I tend not to complain. Sometimes there have been a couple of occasions when I've done something like this, where, where, where I'll get up to the front of the line. I, says, I say something like, boy, it's just overwhelming today. It's too bad there aren't more cashiers available. And I'm going to digress, and you're probably not going to like this, Pastor, so cover your ears. The Walmart that we have in Lockport is getting ready to reduce the number of cashiers. Oh, good. That's what we need. And, and self-checkout. That's already here. Yeah. And, yeah, and, yeah. And I don't know about you. I like cashiers. I don't, I don't like I don't, I don't like change. But, but, you know, we may find that our Walmart has four cashiers in 30 self-checkouts. And they're eliminating jobs in the process. Buying a different store. Yeah. I hear you. Yeah. I hear you. Yeah. I haven't yeah. shopped at Walmart since they okay. cut down. Okay. Well, Larry, 
how many of those cashier lines that were, are there are ever actually open? Exactly. Except Christmas, probably none. I mean, I went in there one sure. Friday night, being the fact that I live across the street from it, to pick something up, and I literally put it back on the shelf. They had three three lines open that were like huge lines of people wanting it to check out. And even the self-check was a that way. And I thought, ah, it's not worth my effort to stand here. I can come tomorrow morning early. Yeah. Okay, thank you, thank you. Okay, that number, oh, I'm sorry. Clark. No, I was just gonna say, if you look, if there are three, okay. it's yes. got yeah. one or two. Yeah. <laughs> the, sec the, the, the second action item, be on the lookout for people who are alone or look lost and for issues in the environment of facilities. Notice environment of facilities too, and just in addition to people. Do you see someone who might need assistance? Is the trash or spill on, is there a trash or spill on the floor? Is there a broken piece of equipment? Is the space clean, neat, and the distraction free? And that, that she shares a story about an usher who noticed a family in the sanctuary after service and asked pastor to check with the family. It turns out the mother was diagnosed with terminal cancer. And so he, he spent some time with her, or she spent some time with her, and then set up a second appointment. And so once again, it's just being aware of the environment and what's going on in people's lives, trying to read between the lines. And, and so the, that usher made the connection that helped the pastor get in touch with a family that had some bad news and was, was a, basically able to see God at work um, through, the, through the greeter or the usher and then through the pastor as well, because we all have a piece of Jesus um, in us. Um, and we also have the Holy Spirit, because that's where we get strength and, and spunk from and sometimes fire. How's that sound? Um, the third one is develop a dependable system for noticing and acknowledging guests. And obviously, this, this is a very large church, and so I didn't give, I didn't include everything. But at the church, they have two attend, attendance pads, a white one for members and a blue one for guests. So everybody in the church is filling out a pad. It's not just the newbies; it's the members and the newbies. Now, I would argue maybe it's not a good idea to have two different colors because they'll pick up on that. But the concept is everybody's doing the same thing. Um, just before the sermon, the pastor gives instructions to complete the pads and notice the name of the person you're worshiping with. And when we were passing that, we were saying, as you pass the pad back, notice the name you're with. So if they come to coffee hour, and they are a visit, visitor, and that's something we might be doing soon as well, because council will be addressing all these kinds of things on Tuesday. Um, Okay, where was I at? Most of the name of the person you were worshiping with, and when the pads are returned back to the center of the sanctuary and the pew, the author stress, stresses just develop a system that works in your church because, once again, we have to adapt to our context. Okay, um, Larry? Yes. Maybe it would help if we wrote, please print your name. Yes. Then we could read what yes. it was. Excellent. Was. Excellent. <laughs> yes. In fact, so some handwriting is if, if we're the first person to do it, let's set the example. <laughs> Please print because I was accused of in third grade by a nun. I went to a Catholic grade school and I wrote my chicken scratch. And, and other people accused me, why, why aren't you a doctor? You can't read your writing. And so I, I, I have crappy experience. Well, I, I've, I've been known to write improved under this tutelage of this person. <laughs> She runs a pretty tight ship. <laughs> no, not yet. Yes, Pat. <laughs> okay, now let's see. I, I can't tell if I'm going to be done. I'm sorry. Okay. To you. Oh. <laughs> to you. We're into my time now. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Pat. Happy, Happy birthday to you. I'm going to be in trouble now. <laughs> and many more. Extra minutes now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're going to move on to a new topic. It's called offer personal attention. That's the third, second one, I think. I think that worked. Maybe that's not my way. 
Yeah, that's, that's the second one. Offer personal attention. It requires making space in your life, in your making space in your life to notice. When guests receive personal attention, it's memorable. It doesn't happen often in these days of self-service and phone screens. And by phone screens, I mean, when you call up, what's the first thing you hear? If you're trying to make a reservation, press one. If you're trying to do this, press two. If you're trying to do that, press three. So you're not even talking to this. They're trying to pass you along. Go to our website, go to our friendly website. It used to be when you called, somebody at the other end would pick up and route your phone. And once again, we're eliminating jobs, which um, is something I'm not really excited about because we, we're trying to, well, that's a whole other issue. I, this is about hospitality, so I, think <laughs> I, have, I have to hold myself to it. That's right. Don't go off on a tangent. Okay, on a tangent. Thank you. <laughs> Our world gets more and more connected online. It seems we're almost isolated interpersonally. Um, I'll digress one more second. There's a book called it's, um, Everybody's Normal Until You Get to Know. I forget who the author was, but that was, that's what that whole book was about. There were, there were so many places together that were, were kind of like not paying attention to each other. The author quotes Leonard Berry, who is a service expert in states, to exceed customer expectations and create a memorable experience, you need the behavioral and interpersonal parts of the service. You need the element of a pleasant surprise. I like that thought. You like pleasant surprises. And that comes from when human beings interact. People like to come to church and expect one of two things. To be smothered by overzealous church people. That's the one extreme. Or just to be another face in the crowd. Neither one of those, you know, they're, they're two extremes. When we take time to make them feel seen and heard as individuals, we surprise them and delight them. And so if you follow the 10-foot rule, and I'm the closest, and the path right next to me, maybe we won't both go, but maybe I'll just approach so that we're not, they're not getting overwhelmed. Okay, there are six actions under offer personal attention, personal attention. The first is offer personal, uh, introduce yourself and learn people's names. Let's talk, let's talk about how to introduce yourself. You don't want to ask people if they're new, and I've been guilty of that. Here are some opening lines, and I'm sure we could come up with some even good ones too. I'm not sure we've met. I'm Susan. How's your day going so far? Or good morning. My name, I'll say Larry instead of Tim. It's so nice to see you. What happens if you forget their name? It happens to all of us, Larry. can guarantee that. Here's some examples. Good morning, I'm Donna. I think we've met before, but your name escapes me. Would you mind reminding me of your name? And if, if I do that, I won't forget it again because I, if I didn't write it the first time, like I said earlier, I'll write it for sure that time. 99% of the people are going to appreciate your asking and will not be offended by your poor memory. Guess what? It happens to them too. Now, the only person I can think of, Bob Dealey used to be at uh, the Shepherd of the Guild. He was a pastor there. He had a photographic memory. And I don't know how he did it. I mean, there's the, the very few people have that gift, but he had a photographic memory. Next one is, if your church uses name tags, team t-shirts or lanyards, wear them. These and other similar items are tools that help people identify you as someone who might be able to answer questions. It allows you an opportunity to introduce yourself and ask their names too. And once again, during COVID, we said, nope, no name tags. And so I don't know if we're ready to do that yet or not, but if, if we are, let's, let's try and make sure we always have our name tag. And so at least if we go up to someone, they can at least read our name and know that we are probably a member. Um, we don't limit name tags to members only. Um, so if someone starts to come on a regular basis, I know it's Harold, what's Harold Tim, did he ever become a member? It was always, I can't remember if Harold ever became a member of the church. Harold Finley. I know, I'm thinking. I, I, I I'm think not, she, I don't remember. I think Jean did, but I don't know that he oh, ever yes, she did, but I don't know. And I don't think Harold he did. May have. 
but very I, late. Yeah, yeah. In I any event, he, he got a name pick. You know, it's if, if you're coming regularly, we should we should do a name pick. I digress again. Practice the ten foot rule and the three minute rule, which we've already talked about. These are important ways. Um, <clears throat> These are important ways to be more welcoming to guests by giving them the personal attention. I'm not going to say them again because if we were doing this one chapter for a week, then I would maybe take the time. But um, basically, we just finished those a few minutes ago. And so we do the 10 foot rule or the three minute rule. The next one is introduce the people you meet to others you know and include them in your conversation with church friends. We look forward to seeing our friends. When we come to church and the congregants do too. We're not suggesting that the 10 foot rule and the three minute rule exclude you from talking to your friends. So we're not saying don't you dare talk to each other. But, but expand your circle, invite a new person into the conversation and make introductions of the new person feel included and you can build connections with others. So you kill two birds with one stone and doing something like that. You see someone come in. Maybe somebody might even recognize him. If you do, you could say, George could be, you know, or if somebody talked to him the last week, maybe he remembers their name. They could say, you know, Fred or Mary. We're, we're, we're just we're talking about this recipe or we're talking about this restaurant. Have you ever gone there? Maybe, you know, kind of you can include them in, in the conversation. I should put my finger where I left off and my pen keep going. <laughs> um, Okay, I think I'm done with that one. The next one is look for opportunities to go the extra mile. When someone asks directions, just don't just point and say, just you know, walk them to the desired location or make a conversation along the way. To make this possible, if it, if it helps, you can position your volunteers and teams, which, and so one can stay in place while the other person escorts the guest. The book get, gives an example where there was a no team and a new couple needed directions. So a member said, um, just wait one minute. I see Fred and Alice coming in, they're members. And then when they came in, I said, Fred and Alice, um, could you please escort a visitor, Mary and Jim? Uh, and why don't you along the way show them where the, you know, the nursery is and where the Sunday school is and where the restrooms are. So that you know, if, if we're going to make this a congregant wide thing about hospitality, then that that that's a way to take you know be creative on the on the on, on the uh, fly, so to speak. Let's see. <clears throat> the next item is anticipate and fulfill guest needs. We've all experienced how hotels anticipate their guest needs by providing little bottles of shampoo and lotion, so extra pillows, towels, and thankfully, room coffee makers. That was the one I always enjoyed in hotels when they started putting out even put curings in there. We've learned to bring our K cups with us. The church is anticipating <laughs> as, as, as guest needs may be providing print information about the church and its ministries at the welcome desk. Kind of like what Pastor held up that little flyer that, that Pat did, or providing tissues during the cold and flu season and coffee all year round. The author's church has a team of volunteers that work behind the scenes throughout the week, reading, readying the church for guests who come the next weekend. Um, basically, that's that. And sometimes, um, you know, it might could be any of us that just notice something that needs to be picked up. Next item is to provide, this, this is the third item now, provide excellent follow through and there's three actions items there. Um, the principle is one that encompasses everything that happens after the church first encounter with the guests or after we notice an issue in our environment facilities. John Maxwell is quoted about the impact of excellent follow through this way. Diligent follow up and follow through will set you apart from the crowd and communicate excellence. The first one is if you see a problem, own the process of finding a solution. One of the challenges with providing excellent follow through is that when we see a problem, we assume someone else is going to take care of it. 
One way to demonstrate excellent follow through is by taking responsibility. Here are some examples. If you use the restroom and the water is all over the counter, wrap a paper towel and wipe it off so it's dry for the next person. I'm gonna digress here and tell you a story and I hold my finger right over there. Um, I can remember I used to get in trouble because I'm, I'm, I'm sloppy when I wash my hands when I was growing up. And my mom would always yell at me because I wouldn't kind of clean my mess up. So now out of habit, I don't care where I use the restroom. After I wash my hands and I you know, push the soap and the soap drops down on the sink or whatever, after I've completely dried my hands, I take a couple extra pieces of towel, I pick up the soap and put underneath it, I kind of wipe all around the edge. I don't care where I'm at, I do this. Now, if I walk into like a public restaurant with like three sinks, I'm not gonna clean all three sinks up. I'm, I'm not gonna do that. I figured that they should have a staff to do that. But especially here, okay, I'll wrap it up with this one. <laughs> um, I, I, you know, it's, it's one of those things that once once your parent has ingrained something you must do, it's kind of like I, I, when I'm done with the bathroom at home, the toilets you always get put down. End of story. I won't say anymore. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> if you see a bulletin lying on the floor as you exit worship, pick it up. If you see someone arms full trying to come through the door, open it for them and offer to help to carry it, to carry something. Some of us call that chivalry and we do that without giving a second thought. But, um, you know, tr try to be sensitive to all those kinds, you gotta have your radar. And that means, that means, as I said earlier, have your mind in the game and be in the moment. And I'm forever having a problem with keeping my mind in the game or being in the moment. So I'm constantly beating myself up because of that. But that, that's something that we need to strive for. I'm gonna stop here. We didn't quite finish this chapter. So I know, at least I know where I left off. Um, any comments before we wrap up? Um, I don't know how many times during this whole thing that I thought we need to get <coughs> our uh, fellowship downstairs going again. Mm -hmm. It's so even if, if somebody doesn't come downstairs, the fact that we ask them to come downstairs would mean something, I think. And if they do come da down, it's a wonderful time for people to converse with them. Well, and as we moved out of the sanctuary, <coughs> you know, after a service, everybody just kind of gathers there right outside the door at the top of the stairs. And why not have the coffee pump going downstairs? It would be much. Even if we didn't have coffee out of it. So yeah. Say, yeah. I yeah. Well, why not move it upstairs? Why not? You know, well, that too. Yeah. yeah. Well, Just because standing and having to hold something is less hospitable than sitting down and being able to yeah. chat. True. No, that's true. That is true. Yeah. I, right. I didn't go to one church because of that. You okay. know, your coffee hour was held in the narthex and you're trying to hold a cookie and trying to hold the, the cup and your purse. Okay. And, okay. Yeah. Okay. And your yeah, purse okay. and your kid. And, yeah. You know, yeah. I hear you. Okay. This, and it was kind of like, we got watch you to be right here so you can go out quickly. Yes, yes, yes. We'll shut well, you out the door. Yeah. Yes, Janet. Well, and I think when we can get rid of the table, it's right outside the sanctuary. Where I, there's no reason to go anywhere else. Everything is here. And you can stay here. And it's just not really where you want to. The tables? The, the table with the table that's got everything on. is the offering and, and whatever. You you have to get your, your community stuff. Your bulletin, but it's just, everybody's kind of Well, you know, that's something I think, and, and not now, but I'm glad you brought that up, Janet, because that's something that has a, for those of us who are, who are instigating it, has a real purpose to it tied to worship. And so, that's something that we need your feedback and we really need to think about um, because it's to prepare us for worship. Um, and there may be some other ways to do it, some other ways to, to have that kind of 
of materials, but but I well, I think okay. we need to really think about what what that purpose turn, is. Turn, turn. Be create once again. Let the spirit be of creativity come yeah. come to play. I'm glad you brought it up, Jim, because yeah. we need we need some yeah, feedback. Need it's feedback. it's been long enough instigated that now we need the feedback. Yeah. Um, yeah. To know how to how to progress with with what we're trying to do. The other thing, Blair, as you've gone through all of this, I'm thinking, you know, when we get our hosts back and ushers and what have you, whatever we call them. Sure. So much of this uh, is pertaining to them as well. Mm -hmm. yes. no. You know, like you and I have done the, the no. host no. things. No. And, no. you know, no. it's it's very, very much pertaining to that. Definitely, definitely, definitely. Pastor Brenda, I'm, I'm going to ask you to close in prayer when you're done with your comment or question, too, please. Okay, so, so, so I, it's the table. Is there because of COVID? Yes, I agree. If if COVID were finished, ushers could be passing that stuff out to people as they came in. We're not quite there yet, but I imagine we're fast going to that point. The other thing that I wanted to say was about what Elaine started saying, and that is not just invite people to come to go on coffee hour, but say, hey, do you have a minute? come with me downstairs, let's get a cup of coffee and sit down and talk. Make it an invitation that you are willing to participate in so that you are taking them to your table and introducing them to your friends and including them in conversation. Um, and I know that sounds simple, but so many churches do not do it. They just don't think of it. I think uh, we've been really open in doing that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, that has not been my experience. No. Okay. <laughs> well, we haven't had coffee hour either. No, no you had coffee hour when I first got here. Yeah, but, but it was not my experience okay. that people invited me to their table. Or, you know, you, you have you clips. Down, you were downstairs. Yeah, I was downstairs. We're talking, about, we're talking about how we felt when we got it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And so it, that has not been my experience. You you love each other very much, and that's wonderful to see. It causes you sometimes to have blinders towards anyone else who might be in the room or might be different from you. Um, I'm sorry, I didn't mean Oh no! I, I we have to have trust here. We have yeah. to have vulnerability. I, what we don't want you to do is go out in the parking lot. I'm sorry for interrupting, Pastor yeah. Linda, but we don't want you to go out in the parking lot and talk about these kinds of things. We need to be open in our conversations. And so, please, there's no judgments here. Right. We're just trying to just trying to be open. But yeah. we did have some differences of opinion. Correct. Right. Correct. That, yeah. that, and we'll yeah. always have that. That's yeah. UCC way. And the thing of it is, my difference of opinion with you, Janet, is not, I'm just telling you, my experience is different than your experience. And that we need to be aware of the variety of experiences. Because as soon as I said that, Carol also nodded yes. and said that's part oh, of her yes. experience. Too. My experience as well. Um, so it's not to say that your experience isn't genuine, but your experience is not mine. Mine. Okay. I also mm -hmm. want to say that we have not been members here, but it's not like we go to this church or anything. Yes. If we don't talk about things, how are we going to learn? Right. Correct. That's true. And so I'm not trying to take anything away from you. I'm just saying I've had a different experience. Mike has, Carol has, other people. And if we are all engaging to be aware of that and helping people it can only make us all better sometimes it does come out that there's no changes though what was that sometimes we do say some things and there aren't any changes there aren't changes that happen well, it's, it's that's what change. we gotta work at well, it's yeah. gotta change because if, if we're gonna be here in five years that's gotta change mm -hmm. 
and maybe the answer is no, but let's let's own it and say it's no. Let's let's not bury it. Let, 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 let's you know, let, let's I do say some things. We have not ever spoken except I speaking to you. This is a hard thing for me to say in this group. You have asked me to say my voices. Say what? Say what I think because it's healing. I don't know that it's healing at all. I don't know that. But I know that that's not ever happened. And I can say that. Ever. Yeah. And, and I, I do would, talk to you. You can initiate that. I as have well. twice. I can but give the two. You don't need to do that. Yeah, I don't, don't know. You don't, don't need to do that. that. Yeah. Not, this I'm is not, not that. that. I'm trying to say there's more, and it takes everybody. It takes everybody. And we can't just say it's my experience that no one does. It's more than that. And sometimes we're perfect. We can end it now. We can continue it another time. We cannot continue it another time. I guess I know what you're talking about. Yeah, I, I've lost you too. I, I guess I, that was your words when I spoke of communion. I have no idea what you're talking about. And I didn't, and I still don't. I well, we're talking about communion, were we? No. I, I guess. I it's time. Yeah, but for now, let's let's have a closing prayer, but. Uh, and, and, and and stay in the venue of hospitality. Yes. Let's pray, please. Could you wait? Yes. Thank you, God, for this space where we can share our experiences and our faith and our love for each other and for you. We thank you for Larry and for Pat and for all the work that they've put into presenting this. We thank you for each person who is here, who is willing to learn and to make changes to move forward so that we can welcome everyone. And we ask you to watch over us as we leave this place. Some of us are traveling, and so we ask for safety for those who will be traveling this week. Some of us will be remaining at home, but we also ask for safety as we live through this week. Help us be sensitive to your love. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. Safe trip to you, too. Thank you. Have fun. Where are you going? Oh, wow. Where are you going? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I I got it. Yeah. 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 Actually, you know what? Josh and Sam are going to be out there this weekend. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I so I I respect your experience. Yeah, have fun. And I hope you respect mine. Yes, I do too. To be on notice, I'm not gonna have her slurred or attacked. I am going to